Ici Londres. Veuillez écouter tout d'abord quelques messages personnels. Radio Paris, Radio Paris, Radio Paris est allemand. June 1944, and much of Europe is under the shadow of Nazi German occupation. Allied commanders have devised a plan to liberate Europe. Under the overall command of General Eisenhower, this plan sees over 150,000 men gather on the south coast of England in preparation for Operation Overlord. After years of planning, preparation, and deception, nothing can stop the largest invasion in history, except the weather. During the war, Blacksod Point in County Mayo served as a weather station. Daily observations would be recorded between the lighthouse and the grounds of the local post office, situated in the old 19th century British Coast Guard station. One year before the outbreak of World War II, the Irish government signed an agreement with Great Britain, allowing for the sharing of weather information. As a lighthouse keeper, Ted Sweeney was responsible for identifying and recording weather observations from Black Sod. And Maureen Flavin, working in the local post office and telephone exchange, was responsible for sending these reports further up the line to Dublin. In the opening days of June 1944, Black Sod's weather reports would become key in the decision to invade Europe and in so secure the fate of thousands of men on the beaches of Normandy, northern France, on June 6th, D-Day. Vincent Sweeney, Ted and Maureen's son, is the lighthouse keeper of Black Sod today and a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the part his family played in history's biggest invasion. Early June 4th, Allied weather experts predict gale winds striking the coast of France all day June 5th. A major disaster is imminent. The post office was here, and out here in the field there were weather instruments where they were uh, taking the readings for the weather. And in between that, my father would go down the road here, 500 metres down to the lighthouse where he was the attendant, the 3rd of June, at 0200, that reading, the barometer was falling and that was an indication of the weather system coming in. So it was a result of that that the 5th of June Operation Overlord was cancelled. Group Captain James Stagg was the Allies' Chief Meteorological Officer and it was left to him to decipher the weather reports being relayed to Britain. Stagg and his team had to continuously forecast conditions for Normandy and as June 6th approached, a drop in pressure recorded at Black Sod would become the focus of Stagg's next forecast. Although the Allies had other weather reports from locations in the North Atlantic, Black Sod was the most accurate for weather conditions closest to mainland Europe. On June 4th, Ted and Maureen record a rise in pressure on their barometers. Once Allied Command receives these recordings, Captain Stagg sees a window for the invasion. He informs General Eisenhower that June 6 looks like the most favourable. Eisenhower agrees, and the order is given. Operation Overlord is to proceed. Ted Sweeney passed away in 2001, but Maureen, in her 90s, still lives in Black Sod. Some years ago, I interviewed her about sending those weather reports. The weather report was sent in the, at 9 a.m. and about 11 o'clock, which was query and we answered it and an hour after it was queried again so it was the same the same answer and the, the weather report was the same a girl forced from the office the weather office in whatever part of england and then um, a gentleman came on about an hour after again. He must have thought we were half asleep. <laughs> Yet, as if we were up in Ireland. <laughs> we were up all night. <laughs> One of us, of course. Only we wondered why it was asked for again. You know, but we found out 
after about 20 years. <laughs> what she was wanted for. <laughs> but uh, they were laid in all, all with the forecast, you know. It's something to, to remember for a lifetime. Once Eisenhower and his commanders had made the decision to go, a chain of events would take place that would forever change the destiny of Europe and the fate of history. The first of these things was a coded message sent to the French resistance. It read, the dice are on the carpet. There was no turning back. Ici, Londres. Once this order was received, the resistance began to destroy rail and communication lines in and around Normandy to slow up any German response. Within a few hours, Allied paratroopers filled the skies over Normandy, and at 6.30 a.m., the first waves of men landed on the beaches. That day, over 14,000 men would die, both Allied and German. Two years later, Ted and Maureen would marry. Écoutez bien, écoutez bien.